reception of guests, Orca, and thank you, Tiffany, for being here. I'll let you guys start with the board orders okay. so I can run the meeting and so we can move over that. So it was um, 1.2 agenda review and revisions. I do have uh, under the discussion item to add a 3.4 um, communication plan slash posting of meetings. And when we get to that point, I can elaborate more and have the discussion about what I mean by that. Because um, depending on where the um, direction of this new board is going, this will be our last meeting for this local board until like October or November when we um, approve the audit mm -hmm. from the last fiscal year. So, um, public comments and correspondence. I don't have any pertaining to this board. I did have some stuff for the new merge board for the budget questions on that, but that's totally separate. And as far as future meetings, we'll just have one later this year. Okay. Um, 2.1. Approved minutes of May 8th, May 13th, May 16th, and May 21st, and May 23rd. Did anybody have any changes that they need to make? Whether it be a statement that was different or any grammar or spelling errors? I didn't have any. I did not have any. In any of them. If none, I will make a motion to approve the minutes as stated. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, 3.1 discussion agenda. The playground. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you so much, everybody. <laughs> um, I don't have in my report anything on the playground specifically. All, all I do, I just said I would um, talk more about it tonight. But uh, um, one of the things that um, we have been talking about throughout the year is thinking about some additional playground equipment and or more pre-K appropriate equipment out there. There are regulations around pre-K for what they have for play structure and fencing and things like that. Um, right now there's been some efforts to do some fundraising. It's definitely preliminary and some uh, enthusiastic parents that want to help. <laughs> um, I am more on top of it now than, than before um, in terms of uh, how that fundraising is being approved and what it's going under. Um, what I want to do is in the fall or when school starts back up, I want to form a, a playground committee made up of parents and any teachers want to participate, obviously myself, um, and really having it start as a more formal process to what do we want to fundraise for, you know, what's kind of our target structure, um, and uh, have some student uh, choice on what they'd like to see on their, on the playground. Um, so this community, in my, in my eyes, would help solve that organization of you know, what it is we're gonna do, um, uh, the timeline, the fundraising, um, if there's any you know, uh, support by any other financial means we can, we can find. And um, see if maybe by the spring or the following summer we have something to put in place just to add to the playground, so. That's where we're at right now. Um, a lot of folks asked me to, throughout the year, you know, we gotta do something in the playground, and I think just now they got my first year here under, under my belt, I can focus on that next year as something that we, we work towards, so. Um, so I do actually have some questions regarding the, the process and the way that it was approached when started, and who and how is the money being handled right now? Because a lot of the events that are happening 
are um, not necessarily all cash or not all paid with checks. I think some is being paid with cash, especially with the clothes swaps that's happening mm -hmm. and other things that are happened have happened. Um, so that piece for me is um, making sure that there's checks and balance with mm -hmm. how one money's with somebody in their personal hands. When is it getting to Lori? How is it being tracked? Mm -hmm. And the second piece to that, um, I think when the fund, when the conversation mm -hmm. came up about fundraising for the playground, that it's super important, both building community and getting others involved, that a committee should have been started from the beginning and not added on later on in the process. So um, I think before multiple things are done this summer for fundraisers, that a, a committee should be formed sooner than later. And if it's, if it's a committee that starts in the fall, then the fundraisers, the fundraisers should coincide with a group who have input mm -hmm. in that fundraiser process. Um, I think it, it's a great effort, and I, I totally support the playground needing more equipment. But I think um, there was a process the last time that we did this, and we were really pushed by Bill at that point to follow his process with having a committee, having it be thoughtful with what be, what's being put out to the community. And when we're asking um, businesses to support a fundraiser, that they know what they're supporting. Right. And I think in the preliminary process, that's hard to do when we don't know what we want, but that's part of working through that committee so that that information can be put out there. Yeah, because yeah. we've struggled with that in the past where multiple people are going to different, well, the same businesses, right? And, mm -hmm. and we had the bottle drives going simultaneously, which yeah, that was kind of awkward. Work well. yeah. yeah, so anyway, I just, I want to make sure that um, there's a point person, which should be you. Right. And that anything that is happening for fundraisers is going through you. And I definitely want a follow up on the financial part of it as to. Is there anything established yet for that? Well, typically, when, happening with that? whenever we do have um, an event where there is funds, the money comes right to Lori. And we have it, we have it checked and verified. So. Um, that has been what we've always done. So that's what we communicate to folks. And Lori has this, knows where to put that to. Right, I mean, it's all. Yeah. It's all and I'm not really sure exactly from, as of July 1, because it's, right now it's in a playground fund, I'm assuming, because a playground fund account had been established mm -hmm. from the okay. previous one. And I think it's still on our, I think it's still on our financial as a separate line item. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen with those funds as of July 1. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. So that that is a question we're going to have to follow up on. <laughs> we we'll pause on that. <laughs> how that works now that we're... we're yeah, the yeah. question came up about other, you know, um, uh, whether it be a club or, you know, line items within. Right. If it all becomes one thing, and I would hope, and that I would you know. hope that it could stay by building yeah. and go by a specific font whether uh -huh. it's like you smart player has a few different um, funds for events that mm -hmm. they hold mm -hmm. and I would as I would hope that it would stay by building but I don't know that that's the way it's gonna be so, so I just want to make sure that how do we find out if, if you know, the ho hoping isn't really like a concrete answer. So no, and I don't, ha I'm not, I would have to ask Lori Bebo at central office. Yeah. What's happening? Just what, like what, mm. like what does it mean with our one budget yeah. and yeah. the fundraising going with this? Right. I know going, oh, sorry, you were going. Go ahead, I'll oh, say okay. that. Okay. I was going to say, I know going into next year with each school budget that was approved, I mean, Within the within the the system that Lori uses for um, purchase orders and ordering, and um, <clears throat> that it is coded, each school has a different code. code. So there's still some separation going into next year um, with the local budget. So that's why I, I, I assume <laughs> that would also trickle to the these other smaller pieces of, of uh, you know accounts and things. 
So when, it, for this fund, the playground fund, what do people make out checks to? Do they know what to do? Do they, I mean, right. it worries me too. Yeah, I, I know, I, I have to rein in what has taken place so far with, with fundraising. You know, again, there was, there's been some enthusiastic folks and I've, you know, they t talked to me about it and I said, okay, um, started to get a little bit further and I had to talk to some people and say, you gotta just, <laughs> and um, um, so I need to do a little bit more work with, with uh, uh, reining things in and things starting over, you know, a committee sooner than later, I think is a good idea, so. So what will we do with the fundraisers? There's two, right? And there's um, the clothing and then the booth, correct? Yeah, there's a, clo a clothing swap, then the lawn sale booth. And then the lawn sale booth, yeah. Which, I mean, I'm okay. I mean, they've already been advertised like right. a lot, and I'm okay with those continuing. I guess my biggest thing is um, there's nobody that's here to take the money from that day, so it's obviously going with somebody that day. Which hasn't been appro approved by our board for a committee, and um, again, I just want to make sure that somehow that weekend that money's checked in and checked out. Like, there's just no checks and balance there whatsoever. And and does it we are a public school people? doing fundraising for our public property, so I think there needs to be some oversight on that piece of it. Um, I think it's very different when it's just cash written out to Berlin. Or I'm sorry checks written out to Berlin Elementary School for playground. Right, those are easy. Those are easy to follow. And not to say, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that there's anything shady going on. I'm just saying, right. for me, I want to make sure that there's. Mm -hmm. Well, for all, all, all parties. Yeah, included. exactly, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. I mean, even the Never know. folks gathering it. I'll make sure that things are handled properly at these two upcoming ones. Okay, that would be great. Okay. Do you, uh, just a question, that I was trying to interrupt you, sorry. Um, does it have to be two people when it has comes to counting money or taking money, like, or no? That's what I'm used to in the past, but I'm, I'm not sure here. So the works. last time that we created um, a committee, we ended up appointing like a treasurer for the playground committee, um, which, ended up being Renee Legue, and her and Lori worked hand in hand. I think there was only um, one event, and it was actually, um, it was actually done here at school, so it didn't really matter. It was a coin, each classroom did like a coin war, is what it's called, where they had a competition of which classroom could bring in the most to oh, right. yeah. change. come out with, with the change. Other than that, I mean, like the bottle drive that we did, the Redemption Center wrote the check right out to Berlin Elementary. Um, all the other stuff was, Mr. Dodge wrote the letters out to the businesses, so he had the direct contact with the businesses. And those checks, again, were made right out to Berlin Elementary. So I think we were in a little bit of a different situation in that. We weren't doing cash donations. Mm. That's the thing, like, yeah, yeah, right. I don't know how that works. I've just, I, I know for like Berlin residents too, and it's come up multiple times, like at the coin drops that the fire department has. It's come up with the Berlin community, like who's double checking those coin drops and who's double. So I just, I know there are things, even with other, um, other groups within our community that, you know, those questions have come up. So I just want to make sure that. Um, those pieces are covered. So to answer your question, no, I don't think that there has been two people um, like checking in, checking out money, but that's all something that a new committee can, mm -hmm. can decide. Yeah, yeah can, can yeah. decide and own. Okay. And Just I think appointing a tread like a playground treasure person so that I know Renee kept track of all of the money <clears throat> coming in from businesses, and Lori did, so that we all made sure that we knew what we had for money. Let's get check some notes. Good. Okay. All right, moving on to 3.2, absent and late. Have, 
So this is a summary of our absences this year. So the, the, the nice thing about Infinite Campus is we can uh, help us with our attendance and, and truancy and, and tardies. So this is the uh, attendance report. I have it broken down by uh, grade level. Um, so you can see percentage at the far right column of um, uh, attendance for the year, and then the total at the bottom. So 96.3% attendance this year overall. Um, so I don't know if Anybody has any questions more specifically about uh, procedures or? Um, How does that goal? compare to other schools? The attendance, ninety-six percent. What's the no. average for no. our? <laughs> no. Do we have a goal? Advisory union. What that should be? Well, one hundred percent would be awesome, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, but that's not real. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I don't know what other schools. Um, I don't have access to, I have to ask. I guess the data, Vermont data, it would be good to know. Mm -hmm. And is there, what's what's the steps if someone's late versus someone who's absent, so how many absences can you have, and then does it go against the record, or what's the policies? Right, so uh, in, our, in our procedures um, at, oh, remember, remember off the top of my head, at, at five days there's a, at five days of, um, originally it was unexcused, unexcused absences. Uh, parents would get a notice that you're at five unexcused absences. Okay. At, but that has changed now, correct? That has changed you, you, now. Because we I can talk about that too, yeah. Go ahead. No, go ahead okay. if you want to talk about the yeah. change. So uh, this past year, the um, local PCF um, DCF and uh, the state's attorney asked uh, at least our SU and I'm assuming other schools in the area to track um, any student that is that is absent um, that their only excuse to make it unexcused is uh, sick and the parent has to have a doctor's note so if they are just sick for the day to, to, for it to be excused that the parent has to get a doctor's note. Um, and after, so I, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, five, um, I don't know if it's five, 10, and 15, or if it's five, seven, and 10 in terms of days. So five days, there's a letting parents know that your child has missed five days. Um, and then as it gets a little bit more, you know, there's a meeting with the parents, you know, to come up with a plan to, you know, see what's going on. Is there, um, anything that we need to discuss to help get your child to school. Um, and then what, what DCF and the state's attorney has asked is that any parent that it's that, that again, a 10 or 15 mark, um, that an affidavit is, is sent. And uh, again, if somebody takes a, a five day vacation in right. the middle of the year and they're just going to Florida, I still technically by that rule have to count it as unexcused it goes forward. I'm hearing that um, uh, <laughs> from another principal that um, you know she has been sending all the letters whenever kids hit that mark and uh, they're a little bit overwhelmed with <laughs> the amount of paperwork they're getting and not even looking at some of these. So they're kind of you know shooting themselves in the foot with this, with this and now they're getting inundated with, with letters and paper and um, the flexibility is just a little bit not there with this new initiative. So it um, came, came, came in, uh, it was like February, March when this came down. And I mean, for the rest of the year, I was a little bit more flexible with, I mean, some people had taken vacations in the fall and, you know, I wasn't gonna go send a letter to <laughs> DCF about it. So and as we head up into the next year, we're supposed to track it that, that, uh, even if you know what they're doing, mm -hmm. even if you know what they're, that they're on vacation in Florida, or um, yeah, right, right. Yeah. But but they're not even looking at it, like right. DCF, and yeah. So it's kind of it's kind of silly, but that's what they wanted. 
Is any funding connected to any school funding, like government funding, state funding, federal funding, associated with absences? So, um, no incentive, really. No, and even like no. one thing in uh, is uh, students that are tardy. It's very hard to um, curb that. I mean. Uh, the, there's really no teeth other than some sort of consequence at school, and sometimes it's not the student's fault, you know, it's the parent. <laughs> so it's hard sometimes to have some sort of procedure where if you're, if you're tardy so many times to, you know, discipline a student when it might not be their fault. And sometimes it is, and the parents love it. I mean, in my other school, we had a pretty strict tardy thing. Not so much here. Um, I'm not seeing an excessive amount of tardies here. Um, but, uh, Darren, do you know how the membership fees are calculated? Because if I took the student, the student count times our school days, it doesn't equal the membership days. Do you know how that? Yeah, it's, it's something weird like, um, <laughs> like a, a pre-K student is counted like one and a half in the in the ADM, oh. and it's, as students get older, it's it's counted a little bit less. So I'm not sure how the calculation would work here, but when it comes to that that ADM that we talk about, uh, <clears throat> a a younger student is counted more than one person, one one head, if you will. It's like one and a half or something like that. Which still, I don't know how they're doing the calculation because if you look at the student count, like for triple E, there's seven, but the ADM is less. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure. So maybe clarity. Maybe on that's next time. Um, I'm not sure because we we have more. Well, seven, eight. Yeah, I'm not sure. I have to find out about that. And that, would be that. I was just curious because, like, looking at um, like grade six, there's I have to sit where I can hear. And uh, the membership days are over 5,000, but the absent days are actually significantly high, and it's even higher for fifth grade, which I would think that would drop the percentage down a little bit more than less than 96 percent. Mm -hmm. Because the absent days for fifth and sixth grade together are significantly high. But again, it's um, it's obviously averaged out over 34 students, but that's like over a calendar year of school days. Mm -hmm. Right. At 180 days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would be curious um, as a follow-up as to how I see, like what some of these columns and how they calculate it, just for my understanding of looking at this report, yeah. rather than just the last column and seeing that percentage, I'd like to know how they get to that percentage. Because some of the grades seem significantly high for absentee rates. Mm -hmm. Which which in effect it truly affects their, their daily classroom yeah. curriculum and what, what they're getting out of their classroom at a very important age that grade. So I would like a follow-up on Sure. Well, that's what I was saying, like, it, like, do we have a goal? Is there a benchmark? Is it like, we can look right. at this all we want, but at the end of the day, we're not, do we have a goal or a benchmark or something that drives us to, 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 to be concerned about it? Correct. That's what's missing for me. Yeah. I mean, I think probably, you know, if these, if these other procedures cause more, you know, cause for parents to say, well, maybe they won't find vacation during the school week and save for another time. I, I, I don't you know that's one thing that this new procedure can do um, is to put a little fear, unfortunately, into parents. Right. Um, I think, uh, <coughs> yeah, I mean, um, I don't know. When, when, when kids are sick, it is. I think, from my perspective, when you ask about goals and benchmarks, I think um, 
my approach would be one to look at like the three and four year old preschool. I mean, obviously, we know that is a little bit. You know, sometimes transportation is harder. Sometimes they have less days because of either a late start for school for snow days or an early dismissal. Mm -hmm. um, so they often are more <laughs> sick at those ages, but their attendance is better than our fifth and sixth graders. So I guess I would like to actually research it a little more to actually like find out, um, especially the unexcused days. I mean, if they're unexcused, well, maybe what's just going on? educationally, like test scores, will it affect their star? You know, the testing when they miss school. Affects you know, the more you miss school, the more you're, mm -hmm. you're not good grades. Yeah. It could be intertwined with some other reports that you're doing mm -hmm. or programs. There's value in the data, but we gotta figure out what's that value. Right. Yep. So that. Okay. okay. All right. Action. Sure. So I, I don't give a copy of my uh, principal's report, but I included <coughs> I included our focus areas in uh, in my report on the first page. There, numbers one through six are um, what would constitute goals in our action plan. There's an SU wide CIP, um, and um, I know that's something that is being going to be revised. So what I live listed here are things that that either have work work that has that has been started prior to my arrival and things that I've seen in my first year that I know we need to to start to um, dive deeper into. So I'll just go down through the list here and share and talk about what each one one is. Um, at, the, at the last meeting I talked about our multi-tiered system of support and EST plan. Um, and this is a systematic way to support all students in the school. Um, each Vermont schools are required to have an EST uh, plan or um, uh, format. Um, <clears throat> so Berlin kind of had one. And coming on board, there was, there was talk of, well, it doesn't really Function doesn't really exist, so this year we spent a good chunk of time making sure that uh, we have a system in place. So, um, if students are, if a parent or a teacher uh, is seeing a student that needs some support, you know, intervention might not be working, but there's an actual procedure for them to meet with our team to help further look at uh, what else we can do to um, support that child. Um, the multi-tiered system piece is looking at how all pieces of the building work. So if we think about literacy intervention and math intervention, um, special education, um, behavior support, you know, how is it all working together in a clear and, and consistent way? So that's what the MTSS part is, is putting it all together. So everybody knows what to do when and, and, and how it works. So we'll, uh, we're going to be continuing work around that next year. Um, a really big piece going into next year is our new math program. So the supervisor union adopted a math program called Ready Math, and uh, we're excited about that. Uh, you know what, Berlin um, math outcomes with kids have, have not been strong over the years. Um, our language arts assessments are stronger than our math. so. Um, this is something that, again, kind of coming on board and not seeing anything that some teachers can use, even as a guide, has, ex has existed. So uh, the Ready Math, I think, is a really good program. Um, teachers piloted it throughout the year. And as we go into next year, we have a very strong professional development plan. Um, Tyler Smith, who is going to be taking Kim Farone's spot as interventionist. Uh, we've been meeting over the last couple of months with Jen Miller Arsenal, our curriculum coordinator, and um, Ellen Dorsey, one of our SU math coaches, and we've developed uh, some strategies that he will use with with teachers. Um, 
along with Ellen throughout the year to ensure that you know people understand the program, that there's some consistency with the the scope and sequence of, of each unit, and making sure that we have the right materials, um, just making sure that there's an understanding of, of, of the program and that it's uh, carried out with, with fidelity. Um, monthly data analysis, um, teacher coaching, um, all that will be, will be in place. So we're excited about that. Um, in language arts, and jump in with questions, please, if you have any. Um, we are going to be starting training in Orton Gillingham. And um, this is something through the Stern Center that has uh, been grant funded for folks that do uh, apply. And um, next year I have, this fall we have seven teachers that are going to be um, attending the introductory course. And um, I took it in the uh, last spring of last year and uh, it's a really amazing, not only course, but just help, help, help teachers with that understanding of the English language down to its core. So um, it helps with a more phonics-based understanding of, of teaching reading, and um, it's not a program, so it's not like, oh, we're gonna buy or, or we wanna purchase something. It's more of just an understanding of how the English language is broken down at the at the at the very basic level. So everyone's really excited about that. Um, there have been some folks here that have taken pieces and parts of it in the past, and they're really excited that we're we're going to look at it as a, as a whole school. So that's that. I just lost my report. Hold on. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, number please. Three, the language arts one. Mm -hmm. um, so is. In here, it indicates that the six teachers will be attending the five training days. At which, what grade levels? Mm -hmm. So, um, two first and second grade teachers are taking it. Um, Wait, how do you get uh, Fifth grade teacher and the two kindergarten teachers, I believe, have signed up. Pull that up specifically. That, that's cool. I was just yeah. wondering if it was represented amongst the different. So yeah, that's five. I would hope that one of the three, four teachers are going. Yeah, I'm pretty positive one of them is. I have to pull up my list. I have to find it okay. in my files. I couldn't remember off the top of my head who was exactly taking it. So I know one, two, Jane, and um, I can't. I can't recall off the top of my head. It might, might be when. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And the hope is that in the spring there's another, it's typically fall and a spring, so in the spring we have more folks that haven't had a chance to do it, so. Okay. Uh, I wanted to mention scheduling. Um, one of my, I guess, philosophies is as a building administrator, you want to have a good, comprehensive and solid schedule so the workings of your building are going smooth and there's no frustration. And um, going into next year, one of the things that, uh, in thinking about the time that we have spent on math instruction could be stronger. So in next year's schedule, we are looking at a 60 to 90 minute um, window for in instructing math. <laughs> um, in some cases, part of that 90 minutes is, is intervention. So um, because math is, is a, a need and a goal area of ours, because we have the new program, uh, we've been able to look at the schedule for next year and allow 60 to 90 minutes guaranteed for, for each, each classroom. Um, we have to have two PE days per year, or per week. <laughs> um, we will have music, art, guidance, and library, as we always have for specials, and then the two PE uh, classes per week. And for the most part, um, we were able to, uh, our specials were able to not just be first thing in the morning, 
um, but a little bit later in the morning and into the afternoon just to you know allow that first part of the day to you know, as kids are fresh <laughs> to uh, um, access <coughs> access learning um, so yeah morning meeting is uh, something that all teachers do the first you know 20 minutes 30 minutes for sometimes the younger grades uh, for team building for SEL social emotional learning um, and other introduction to the day so that's a little bit around that um, one of the things that we did a little bit of this year but we will definitely be doing more next year is what I call assessment to instruction so at least once a month teachers will look at um, assessment data um, it might be benchmark data it might be student assessments that they may have done you know that week it might be an end of the unit math assessment um, and there's a protocol that we use to really look at and try to understand what's going on in the data to then uh, revisit any strategies that the teacher might need to do to reteach or you know understand that they didn't get it or maybe they all did and they can then go on to something else so it's a way to really think about um, not just not just teaching and hoping that they get it but to really understand are they and uh, what can we do if they're if they're not um, so we'll be doing that a little bit more regularly especially with the math um, we want to make sure that there's just a clear understanding of the program but also how, how our stu how, how our kids are doing um, also throughout our staff meeting time um, we will be looking at um, social emotional learning so we are piloting as a supervisor union and we don't know what what program yet but there'll be a few that uh, will be piloting next year and then the following year look to implement something um, school-wide so social emotional learning program our two kindergarten teachers here are going to be piloting it and uh, um, I'm not sure if another teacher is but uh, that will be upcoming in a couple of years so and of course as part of our our teach point supervision and evaluation system um, I visit classrooms as often as I can um, sometimes through the system I can conduct a walkthrough so I can actually you know I'll come in and sit and uh, it's like a mini observation so I'll know what's happening and provide feedback to the teacher so it's good for me because I can see what's going on at a more microscopic level and it's good for them because they get some feedback um, but I'm I'm visiting and popping around in classrooms throughout the week anyway so it's a little more formal way to uh, um, look at the more supervision side of of, of, um, of teaching so those are the big goal areas you know some other small things that we will continue to work on throughout the school but also the supervisory union is the uh, trauma-informed practices um, some of the work with with Dave Melnick has been happening over the years and uh, a lot of that work has been really trying to understand how um, how trauma in students and adult lives affect affect their learning there's been a lot of research recently on just how much it does impact learning and students and adult well-being <coughs> And um, we've been really talking a lot about how we can support students that might have trauma in their lives or might you know, be living um, in a constant state of stress uh, and how we, how we communicate with them at school um, and how we help approach uh, and support them with, with, with what their needs are. Um, so yeah. So I have um, <clears throat> questions slash input. So um, with number four, the scheduling and time built in for morning meetings, I know that um, the morning meeting time slots are very individualized based on the teacher mm -hmm. in the classrooms. Um, I do know that there was some classrooms that actually 
for what responsive classroom was made to be for um, the morning meeting time were not happening this last year. So one feedback would be to highly encourage you to do some walkthroughs during morning meeting time yeah. for all the grade levels to make sure that those morning meetings to build that social emotional learning and their classroom community mm -hmm. throughout the year is still happening as part of responsive classroom. Um, the second piece to the scheduling is um, the um, the bulk of the learning being held more in the morning than in the afternoon, which was definitely a difficult balance this past year. Um, I think we tend to lose some of the kids having a literacy time at the last block of their day, which I know you can't avoid some of those. I'm just asking to put some extra special. Yeah, well, that's what we were able to do is pieces. to to make it so it's so it's more in the morning for yeah. most grade levels. Yeah. Um, and then on to the staff meeting part. Okay. Um, is there any like self evaluation of? the staff meetings as far as, like, I know different staff do different things at staff meetings. Mm -hmm. um, is there a way to make sure that there's either like a survey after a staff meeting or, I'm not asking for you guys to put in extra time to create another yeah. thing to do, but an evaluation to make sure that the staff is getting out of the staff meetings what they needed, considering we're taking those Wednesdays away from mm -hmm. classroom time mm -hmm. for the kids to learn from 3 to 3.35. I just want to make sure that the staff is getting the most out of that 35 minutes or however long that they're in their staff meeting as much as possible. And yeah. sometimes yeah. doing a self-evaluation of how it went during a staff meeting is, it's very informative and beneficial. Sure, yeah, so some more feedback. Um, yeah, I mean, I just so you know, it's just, just so everybody knows, I. I consider that sacred time, mm -hmm. you know, and, and there's there's never, you know, like anybody's job, there's never enough time in the day to get things done. So um, it is nice to um, be able to have that time. Um, I look at, I plan out months in advance what the work might be. So it's not always like, well, you know, it's not, it's not, um, it's, it's, it's pretty specific. Um, and they fill up quick with, with things we might have to do, um, but also looking at what the needs are. So, um, yeah, I would be happy to and should get a little more feedback from folks if you know they're feeling um, how the meetings are going. Um, I didn't get any feedback negative this year, saying that we were wasting time or we felt that there was always plenty of work to do. So. Have you gotten feedback that they were not um, productive? Or? I, I have gotten feedback, and not that they were not productive. It's the attendance level for the, for oh. the people who maybe don't necessarily think they need to attend something. Or Okay. Um, I think so like a topic might not apply to them kind of thing? Yeah. Or, you know. But I think topics apply to, to all staff members right. in right. one way, shape, or form. And it might be a, a trickle-down effect. It might be something that happened in first grade or you're looking at something, the data from first grade, but it, it does affect the whole you know, group of grades yeah. in some way, shape, or form. And I just think that um, it might not be a specific topic that a, a staff member needs to attend, but they should attend. Right. And right. Yeah, I, I think about that a lot. You get to self-select you know, out. <laughs> we have something around math and you know, did the did the allied arts teachers attend? For you know, for example, um, that's just an example. And if it's a if it's a primary topic, you know, do fifth and sixth attend? So I think about those things as we plan and do my best to judge if they should or not. So. Yeah. Does anybody else have any other questions? Yeah, I have a question. Sure. Um, scheduling. So 60, 90 minutes of math. What? For every grade level, what was it before to compare it to? Uh, no more than 60, <laughs> sometimes 50, depending on, you know, 
the, the class of the day. Um, uh, yeah, it wasn't you know always 60 in some cases. So this is definitely 60, and uh, which is what was not only recommended but across the SU. Um, I have to at least 60. And I thought, you know what, we really need to work on math, so a little bit more time, even if it's just to be able to uh, have some more flexibility with, with intervention, um, or perhaps they want to go a little bit further with the lesson. Um, it gives us more time to, to go into it. I think, I think research would show that you know, 60 is probably a bare minimum, and more than that is what would be recommended. Um, so. I just felt that to, to, to provide 90 um, would be very helpful, so. And you're, you're saying in that 60 to 90 minutes, it's the regular math class and intervention? Well, it depends on, it depends on, on the lesson, I think. So in my experience with any math program, 60, you can, you can just get through a lesson and over and done in, in 60 minutes. But sometimes it just feels cut short. And um, feedback from teachers also, you know, like we just need, feel like we need more time to just have those discussions with the kids or get a little further into the lesson. Because sometimes, and I'm just generalizing here, um, you know, a, a canned math program, you just kind of go through it, it's over and done, and you're out of time. Um, it sometimes just feels rushed. Um, so this will just allow us to just go a little bit deeper. And yeah, so it's not necessarily like 60 minutes and then intervention. It's, it's creating that flexibility to, um, to go a little bit further. And just for feedback with the flexibility, I think also for the kids, and there's definitely kiddos at every grade level that um, after 90 minutes, or between the 60 and 90 minutes mm -hmm. of math for their, the ones that need the intervention, but there's still ones that need the enrichment. Mm -hmm. So that dif yep. differentiated teaching of the math to make sure that those mm -hmm. students who need the enrichment are also getting that piece of it. Yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. Some teachers have uh, attended a math, it's called Math Menu, um, and I believe only a few years ago it started as something here across our schools that uh, um, teachers started to learn about and it's basically more of a student-centered approach where you kind of front load might be five or six different um, activities and then at a certain point a student can choose they, they have to get them all done but they can choose what they want to do first or second um, and, you know some reinforce some of the skills some might be more of a of a, a team game kind of Kind of approach, um, but they can look at the menu and then decide. Okay, I want to. I want to do this today, and then give them a little bit of, of choice. So that's where some of the enrichment and even some of the, the intervention can come in as well through that through that math menu. So, yeah. Okay. Another question. Mm -hmm. So um, the structured lunch and recess, more structured. What? What I guess mean? I just need to understand <laughs> your, uh, what you had before and yeah. now what you're having. No, that's that a great question. Explain on that on number four. Okay. Yeah, so um, this year, lunch and recess overlapped each other. So as students yes. were going into lunch, there were still students in there finishing their lunch. It was a little bit chaotic. Right. There wasn't like a kind of a clean cutoff. Mm -hmm. So a class was coming in, the other class had five more minutes. And it was a staff struggle to, you know, get these kiddos lined up somewhat uh, civilly, <laughs> right. um, and those coming in to have to kind of deal with that those kids transitioning out, uh, just you know, just caused a lot of commotion and, and, and struggle. So um, this is just a more clean like. As one of class is going in, the other class is coming out. There's no okay. craziness. Um, and even just the flow of coming in and out um, and you know, how students are coming in from recess. Um, uh, we'll have some more we'll have some more procedures in place just so it's 
so it's um, it doesn't feel as chaotic, I guess. And fuller duty schedule is more. Right. So yeah. do I have that on there too? Yep. So yeah. our teachers are um, contractually uh, help with lunch and recess duty. So this year there were some times when other days had more folks than others. So with this, okay. with this, it'll be uh, well staffed um, with teachers and some paraeducators as well, being able to help oversee recess and lunch supervision. So, so yeah. That's good. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, just to note, uh, with the Memorial Day celebration. Mm -hmm. um, that event was, it was a great community event. It was very well put together. And um, I just want to say thank you to all those who organized putting that together. It was a good event. And I would like to see that continue along with some of the other traditions that mm -hmm. we have. Definitely, yes. So it was a good event. Thank you. Thank you. And there's more things in my report. Um, just want to note that Wizard of Oz was a really, I felt positive. Uh, production this year, um, and all the help that <coughs> took place there, the Nikos, the Roaches, the Canizaros, um, our athletic director, Mrs. Smith, um, students did just a really great job with the performance. Um, just so folks know, we are housing summer program again here this year, like we did last year. There'll be less kids because we won't have the high school students, but July 9th, August 7th um, is our summer program happening. That's a SU program as well. They do use the three to five and five, three to three to four and five and six classrooms. Uh, but I work closely with the staff to make sure that you know everything is going well with maintenance and cleaning. So we have a plan for that this summer as well. Um, just in terms of maintenance over the summer, just some of our focus areas, obviously painting classrooms that need painting. Um, Chuck and I talked about possibility of looking into blacktop ceiling, usually out like on the basketball court. Um, obviously classroom work with floor polishing and um, for any furniture repairs. Uh, our second floor, they did a great job last summer cleaning out old junk and things we didn't need and more work again this year. Um, landscaping, playgrounds, not, you know, just ma making sure everything's out there is maintained. Painting the kitchen, cleaning, and a little bit of contractor work. We talked about that this year a little bit. Um, that's some of the stuff happening this summer. And just wanted to say thank you to all of the folks that helped with our PTNA end of the year picnic, um, graduation. Very successful. I want to thank Vera for all the work that she's done. She received our Fred Stone Award for Volunteerism, and I was very honored to present you that award. And uh, from all the staff um, in deciding that you being the re recipient, um, well we're just very happy. <laughs> very happy, well and uh, really appreciate all that you've done, Vera. So thank you. Thank you. Before we recess, do you guys have any other questions on this report? No. Okay. Then um, we will recess at 559 and reconvene after our town special school district meeting. Peter. Yes, thanks for coming. Take care. All right, so 3.4, we're going to jump right back into um, the added discussion item, which is communication slash posting of meetings. So um, a couple of things, a little bit of history first. We had talked about um, a communication plan a few months ago, which I realize will be a, a different group of people for the meetings from here on out. Yep. However, um, I do think it is more important now than ever that our Berlin residents knows what's going on with this new merge board, how things are going to work, um, how communication is going to get out and in what forms. 
So I guess I'm looking for feedback as to if you were not a school board member, what forms of communication do you look for from what's happening here at school, what's happening in our community? Do you utilize Front Porch Forum? Do you utilize Corinne's News to Know? Um, what forms of communication do you guys feel are best um, at a minimal cost other than time to make sure that our community is getting the information they need and in the ways that they need it? So that's my first part. So I'll answer your question <laughs> from my perspective. I use Front Porch Forum. I use Kern's News to Know. I use the newsletter from the school as well. Um, I think when I think about it, <clears throat> knowing that there's a, such a diverse, there is such a diverse population in Berlin that like I don't, I don't even know because I'm rarely, not always in our county, right? For but. It feels like there may be a need for something other than electronic format mm -hmm. to get to the diversity of our population. And I don't know necessarily what that is, but I'm curious of others' opinion that that might be a missing piece for us. I definitely think it's a missing piece. Um, <clears throat> I think, so as of right now, there is a school board tab on the website for the, town of, for the school. Um, since I took over as being chair in March, I have not utilized, I don't have access to it, nor have I obviously utilized it. Um, but that's another piece that people are going to that piece for um, news and <coughs> what's coming up in our agendas. And our agendas are posted on a different part of the website, which is very. Well, all of our websites have been super clunky. I mean, they're super it's, clunky. Let's, you know. Be speed on that one. <laughs> yeah. I have a suggestion. Sure. Um, <clears throat> since, you know, going to this merged board, one board, one agenda, I would suggest that, um, this is just a suggestion, but if everything was housed on just the WCSU page, um, then there's just one place for it to be, um, and there, there wouldn't be any error amongst six more schools, all of our six other schools, on those individual pages of, you know, what goes up and, you know, what's accurate, um, only because the nature of it is that, you know, we'll be one board. So um, if somebody at central office was just consistent at just posting it on the the BCSU webpage, then everybody would know that's that's where they can go. It's accurate, and there wouldn't be any error in going to every other school's website. And you know, principals or administrative assistants messing up what gets posted. Um, you know, it doesn't it doesn't answer the question of like what other methods or places information can be, but um, it's just a thought that you know. Yeah, I think that's. It's spot on in the sense of it is a centralized place across and I, and all. And I the do agree. Yeah. Um, my only concern with that would be um, that somebody might not know what to look up for the WC UUSD to get to our meetings or calendars or agendas. Um, I, I. You mean I guess once they're already on the site or just getting them no. to the site? So at say all? somebody moves into Berlin and yeah. from California right. and they don't know it's W. Yeah. Well, no one's going to know. So they're going to look on the Berlin it, so. website. Yeah. So I guess I would rather see it simultaneously. And it does cut out um, for sure if we're having one agenda versus mm. six, that it just simultaneously get put up on both websites the new district's website and each individual school's website. Mm -hmm. Why don't you just put links on the individual school yeah. sites that will go to too. the one to the to Aaron's point of Which only is having fine, one except for it's very clunky, like you said, to find some of those links that are there already, like oh. the one to the to the school board yeah. link. It brings you to the calendar and that's it. Mm -hmm. And it's a blank calendar at that. <laughs> How do we fix that? Who does it, that? Who is the administrator of all those? Well, each individual school 
Right. The, the front okay. office handles that. Mm -hmm. okay. That's where we can get. Well, who is it for the whole district? I think Krista mostly <laughs> oversees the whole um, website. But right. the website that we used to have, whoever actually built that website, was very well done. The calendar was well done. The actual website itself brought you to like the PTNA link. It brought you to um, a sports. Right. Well, maybe we need to just address that it's not working. Um, maybe we need to tell our board members of the district <laughs> to get the. It's a conversation that we're already having as a new board, yeah. merged board, um, for sure. And I think the piece of. Um, what other forms of communication and I mean what I would love to see is uh, not necessarily like a PR person who can do a monthly you know these are the things just a quick snip this is what's happened at the last few meetings this is what's coming up you know whether it's like budget season or just new that initiatives way, on a monthly mm -hmm. mailing yeah, we need or even a quarterly mailing we need some something paper. to get out um, to our community members so, do we like what do I do at the other towns in our district? Do, like, they already. Callis does a lot. I'm not sure. Do you know, Dave, exactly? Like, Callis seems to be well informed. Somehow yeah. we should inform. They're better. I mean, I don't know who does it for them on their school website, but you know, they're more. The when you go to the meeting resources, they're there. They're there. You know, yeah. and and they're there really early and, and you guys aren't for what I, I know. know who does I know, know I mean? I, I've heard the feedback I, 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 it may be the person's out you know what I mean so the person who normally does it Krista sends it out um, but you know if it's going to somebody who's not there then it's not getting done in a timely way so you know that's not I think that that cures itself if, if it's one and Krista just says okay I plunk it into the, to the central website and put it into each one of the individual ones because it's the same you know, there's no right. there's no difference to it, um, and you know, but, you know, it takes out the I'm sending it to the secretary at one school and the principal at another school, and you know, mm -hmm. whoever I, I don't know who does it, but they but they do do it more timely in, in Callis for whatever reason. And if Callis, honestly, I don't know if they have like Saturday morning coffees, but they seem to be able to have like community conversations often. Like their community members are well informed mm -hmm. about what is going on. And they have been through this whole, since I've been on the Articles of Agreement Committee right. two years ago, it was mostly the Callis residents that attended those meetings. And I don't know if it's just their interest. Right, I was gonna say it. But I mean, we, we have interest here in our town. I just wanna make sure that they're getting the information that they need and to make sure they're informed. Mm -hmm. Um, and more than ever, because there's only two there representing, like, it's critical. Um, just something I, you know, um, it'd be great, like, on the school side, you know, when the meetings are, like, in the, you know, when we have dates on the calendar, we know oh, this is when a meeting is. Maybe we can highlight the stuff from Berlin, you know, itself. And then if they want to see what the other towns are doing, they can click go to a certain spot. Maybe they'll save on money and printing. I like paper too. Like I like every kind, honestly, because I'm so busy. Sometimes I, I see it on front porch, um, paper, anything, and paper reminds me because it's on my face, or I can put it there, or put it in my phone. I hate paper, but I do think that there is a population here in Berlin that, that I don't want to like I like paper. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like the news to know as well, like Curran's news to know. I like all of it, um, just keeping up with it. But, um, you know, like I have business and people, some people don't want to go on the computer. They don't want to do anything. They just want to call me. You know, they, that's all. They they don't like any of that electronic other than phone call. So, they just, we so, have to appeal to all. Exactly. You know, all so looking forward, I guess my hope would be somehow is to make sure that every classroom newsletter that goes out. Yes. And again, mm -hmm. I, I'm assuming it will be myself or George that takes on this point of contact to make sure whatever we're doing at our new district meetings, that that communication comes back to go out here amongst the whole school newsletter, but also individual classroom newsletters. Yes. Right. 
And so that means we have to have like a point of contact here. Here. Uh, yeah, I mean, you haven't gotten into the school based <laughs> council's contents at, at the board, the new board yet, but Correct. that may be sort of. Yeah, I've reached out to Scott. specific, you know, information on the website coming from that group as opposed to the board, which is looking at everything. Correct. And I'm really interested, so I definitely want to see what's. See it every if It'll just, it reminds people. So I. Um, Aaron, if you could help navigate through who, who here, if I sent the information to, is it going to be Lori that's going to distribute it to go into the classroom newsletters? I'm, I'm happy to build be a way, list yeah. and send it to the classroom teachers to put in their newsletter. <clears throat> I mean, they can just cut and paste. It's not going to take any more of their time. Mm -hmm. I will provide them the information, or somebody yep. will. Uh, yeah, I, the best would be to, to send it right to Lori, and then we can get it to everybody. And then that way she can also put it in. Um, and the other thing too is we can always do, this is the thing we can always do, a, an email blast to everybody in that, that way also. So it's email, it's paper. Um, so, yeah. The email is good. The only thing I struggle with in the email is, is that we don't get all the Berlin residents. Right, right. Yeah. Right, right. Like school. At least if the news, like the classroom <coughs> newsletters and the whole school newsletters. But again, if they don't go to our website, mm -hmm. yeah, it still doesn't reach. But maybe the other thing to do is our classroom, new, not our classroom newsletters, but our whole school newsletters, um, sending it to the town clerk and assistant town clerk, and they can post a copy over there for the monthly ones that are published. That's a great idea. Because a lot of people go in and out of that town clerk's office. Yeah. And if they have one posted over there monthly, Mm -hmm. And there's another paper copy out there. Right. How do we do paper to not just here, but the residents? What were, what were you thinking? Like well, a one has well, a cost associated there, with that. There is a cost associated. That's why I'm thinking if we at cost least have one resource. copy, mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. one that's published mm -hmm. at the town clerk's office, and both Corinne and Rosemary have those, if people come in for whatever reason to the town clerk's office, they mm -hmm. could be right there and kind of look it over, read it, scan it. And they could always make photocopies if people wanted to take it to go. They could certainly have copies there, too. Have we ever thought of having uh, like a monument sign? I mean, that's the technical name of it, where we sign out front and it posts events or things? You know, like I a board. Talk, yeah. about it. Um, <laughs> that would be, we've talked about it. <laughs> we talked about it, and we ended up with the Granite Berlin Elementary School sign. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great, too. I mean, like a digital thing. Or, I don't know, the letter, you know, where you put the letters in, it's white, you stick the letters in, whatever yeah. is more cost. Cause just, mm -hmm. I mean, I would love it as a parent, for sure, but that's such a, we have, like, such a busy area mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I definitely think um, if we could get the newsletters starting right at the beginning of the school year and be consistent with it and getting it as many places as we can. Um, I think that's a good first step. Right? Like, just we've got to have some maybe some more diligence of getting a consistent message all the all the places. And so, obviously, we've already talked about the posting of meetings, but um, again, making sure those postings are happening on our website, which legally we have to have it on our website. It has to be posted here in the school. Mm -hmm. And it has to be posted at the town clerk's office, which typically, like, I don't know that it hasn't been posted at the town clerk's office, but the other two pieces for our June 17th meeting were not posted which I can totally understand with all of the chaos and the constant change. <laughs> totally get that it didn't get posted. So by no means is it all worked out anyway, because we didn't have a quorum. So <laughs> um, I just want to make sure that somehow there's a point person for me to communicate with so I can just make sure that those meetings are being posted. Yeah. Lori would be the person, but CCing me would help too, just so I 
the bully on top of it. That's okay. Yeah, and typically anything I send to Lori, I always send to Christina, you, and Lori. Yeah. So then it's yep. everybody's getting it. Um, yep. So, okay. So obviously it's going to be um, a work in progress with making sure communication and post-end meetings is happening. But at this point, if we could make sure that the newsletters are going to the town office, um, would be a great start for the start of the school year and making sure that our school calendar has our meetings on it. When I say our, I mean the new WC, UUSD board meetings. Yeah. Um, and moving forward, I will work with Lori on little updates that can be put on our website, probably bi-weekly, because we will be meeting every other week mm -hmm. for the foreseeable future, so it will be bi-weekly oh. updates. And as like budget time comes around or those bigger things that are happening, town meeting day, big changes, if the classroom teachers could put it in their newsletter. So that's where we'll start with that. And again, I'm open to any other thoughts and ideas for that mm -hmm. on how to get that it out looks, there. Looks like the school board calendar one is, I mean, Callis has nothing on there, it's going back. I mean, it's just blank, it's there. Right. It's like something that's there to be used, but nobody, nobody uses it. Uses it. Mm -hmm. um, it might, maybe they have community building events, like like you said, a coffee or, I don't know. I don't know, but those callous residents know what's going on. <laughs> um, Dave, do you have any idea how many residents in the town of Berlin receive the Times Argus? I don't. Probably could find out, but I mean, I'm sure I mean, I know going up and down my road, and I see the mail there, the newspaper boxes. So I can say most of Hill Street Extension and Stewart Road have a box, a newspaper box, but that doesn't really give me much. No, it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that they get a newspaper either anymore, right? Or, True, right? All right, mm -hmm. reports to the board administration on page 10. So uh, that was my board report. Yep, so that was my board report, and I shared yep. the. Uh, you did all that. Most okay. of that stuff. Yep. yep. All that stuff. Oh, There's There's pictures. Yep. Really <laughs> great stuff. Pictures. Nothing in the year. So. That's another piece that actually um, came up at one of the um, new merged board meetings. Was in the reports, having like a snippet of what to celebrate what has happened, but also more of a focus on the what is going to happen. What's coming. What's coming. <laughs> so it's giving the board a chance to weigh in on the up and coming stuff rather than waiting until it's already happened and you don't get a chance to have that input until the next go around. Um, so that's a conversation that is continuing to happen, I think, at a retreat. Um, how to better set up the reports. Mm -hmm. So there's more with the what's coming up. Mm -hmm. And the financial report, um, without having Lori here or Bill, I'm not sure if there's any significant changes. I didn't compare this to the previous one, but it's still a pretty good um, ending in our fund balance. It's over 4%. So, do you know of any changes to it? No, not from last time. Um, I I would like to say that I think um, you know we do a good job here of being frugal and conservative. <laughs> <laughs> um, the our our uh, food service program, our kitchen this year, came in under budget, so we're happy about that. Um, we really made sure that Dave, being new here as well, got used to the operations of the kitchen and the ordering. And um, so, you know, we 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 try to um, obviously we're just you know we're careful when we when we make purchases, and if it's sometimes finding 
a deal on something that we might need. Um, we're very conscious about that, so. It looks like this has been updated, because it has the June 2019 expenses for the um, technology equipment and the school-wide spending update. So it looks like it has been en entered as much as possible through, okay. through the end of this fiscal year, which leaves us with a pretty good um, fund balance mm -hmm. to close out the year, even with what few bills will come in right. through the end of this month. Right. right. So it looks like the bigger chunks have been expended. And then um, on page 15, <laughs> so there used to be the playground fund on that page, but I'm assuming because that was. I had looked for it before. I didn't, yeah, after you said there. that, I didn't see it. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll have to ask Lori what exactly happened to that. Mm -hmm. and, where, and Aaron, can you just follow up in an email at some point? when you check with Lori here to see where she's putting the money? Yeah, definitely. Yep. That would be great. And if you could also, like, in your principal's report monthly, maybe just let us know, like, with the different events, how much we're making mm -hmm. on those events. That'd be great. Okay. It's actually a good um, way to find out what's successful to mm -hmm. hosting those events. All right. Um, to the action agenda, 5.1, accept the new hire, page 16. Um, Does somebody want to make the motion yeah. first, and then I'll go, go into the discussion? Okay. Two people. The new hire. To approve the new hire? Yeah. Okay. That, there's two. Yeah, I was going to say. No, there's there's two two about. <laughs> it's hard to approve someone if I don't, I don't know any. We can start talking about it once we make a motion. Okay. I motion to approve Jessica Cosma and Enzi. And Mary Beth Downing as teachers. So now we're open for discussion on that. Um, so a couple of things with the new hires that have been done in the past that was um, pretty successful with um, the board approving the hires. Um, there was always a parent and or a community member on the interview slash hiring committee, mm -hmm. of which um, was not the case in either of these. No, we, we did have um, we did have a committee member, a community member parent on, on this. So um, one of them, you got best listed. Ashlyn yep. Smith, is that who? No. Oh, you're she looking at the, the five, six? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can talk more about that if so I had had a conversation with Bill and he uh, he supports actually having a parent in a, or a community member or a school board member on the hiring committee mm -hmm. um, specifically because when we're asked to approve a hiring it's at least nice for a some kind of one of the board members to have that first interaction with them um, and also to have a part of getting to know that person before approving for a hire. Um, and I had I talked to Bill about these when they were in our packet for the June 17th. And um, the other piece in the years past, when we actually had the person on our agenda to hire them, okay. they would come to our meeting to introduce themselves to see okay. who the board is and just mm -hmm. get to know us and just be yeah. Or, you know, just to be here for the approval. Um, and I'm not saying that I'm expecting them to come on a beautiful Monday night right after school ended. However, in this situation, I actually would have 
asked them to be here. Um, okay. Had Bill still been here? But in the transition of superintendent and you being new here, I can totally understand how the chain of events happened. Mm -hmm. But especially with this new board, um, I think it's more important than ever when a hiring is gonna go out to the full board that some board member be on a hiring committee mm -hmm. regardless of what the hire is from custodial to right. principal. Right. I think it's super important for a board member to be on the hiring committee. Um, or if not, a parent that works closely with the board that would represent mm -hmm. um, communicating with the board as to what their thoughts are about the yeah. candidates and the hiring, the person we're hiring. Um, I would assume that there'd be some procedures created for, I think all principals would question, like what's the hiring procedure moving forward with the new entity? Um, because we don't have any guidelines today on that, right? Right. Other than yeah. just, uh, but it's a good, yeah. there's yeah. always been a representation of a parent and or a board member on yeah. the hiring committee. Yeah. And one, I mean, just for looking, you know, at, at this paper and seeing names, so. Um, the the committee under Mary Beth, including that parent, yeah. was able to interview and see teach um, Jessica Ijitsi. So, I mean, I can explain the details of how, you know, why her name's not on there. The parent's name's not on there, but. Um, we did well, have Bess is on the three four. Yeah, I was gonna say Bess is on the five six that did not. It and was Bill five, confirmed six. that there was not a right. parent. Do we on have that a so, on right. that one? So what happened no, was we we posted the three four, and we had thirty applicants. <laughs> we posted the five six. We literally had like four. Um, Jessica applied for the three four and the five six. Mary Beth applied for the three four. So we interviewed Mary Beth with everybody on this. Uh, interviewed by, including Bess. Um, we interviewed Mary and Jessica. So speaking specifically about Bess being the parent, um, she, she was at the interview, she was at the teaching demos, um, and because Jessica had also applied for the 5-6, um, we, myself, Jessica Heinz, Kate, and Ashlyn, since um, they were going to be on the five, what would have been the five six committee, we talked to the five six team. Um, I had talked to Bess. You know, there wasn't a separate interview because she was one of the only ones that applied for the five six. And since she was considered for the three four, we felt like, wow, you know, this is great to have two really two good people. Um, so it was kind of a, a, a combined interview process almost. <laughs> Which I, and I totally <laughs> get all sense, that. Yeah. I guess from my perspective as a board member, um, being, and it's a process piece that mm -hmm. if, if one of us couldn't be on this committee, and it was yeah. best that was on the committee for both interviews, which is perfect, I would have asked best to be here tonight to get okay. her input. Okay. Especially, I mean, I wouldn't expect these two candidates came here tonight. Like their summer just started if they're, both currently teaching. Right. So yeah. um, just having that piece of information. It's hard to approve it just just carte blanche. That, that's granted right. 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 right, and that's what I'm oh, saying. Right. And that's why in the past, as much as these approval forms have come before the board, there's always been other um, board members that have served on the committee and been part of the process right. to give us that information about them mm -hmm. when they came back. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Um, I, I guess even in even moving forward with the new board, um, I would assume, I shouldn't assume, but um, I would support the new board having, if a parent or um, board member is on the committees, that they would come to our meetings when we approve a hire from this point forward. Okay. And. Um, there, I mean, it's just the whole process piece that um, 
I think some contracts also have been out without our approvals either. So that whole process piece, I think, needs to be kind of reeled back in and follow mm -hmm. what the process is. Okay. So there is a process. There is a process. Okay. That we approve that before contracts <laughs> go out. I, I was, I was not given sp specific guidelines on, on hiring. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, you know, I am a, I don't, I don't issue the contract itself. That's a central office thing, so yeah. that's not a school thing. But um, sounds like yeah. we have a couple gaps in the existing process that we should probably address as well, and just yeah. we can't we, we can't hold anybody accountable for right unknown right. process. I think it makes sense what you're. I agree with what you're saying. At the same time, it's the right check and balance to have other people engaged in that. Absolutely. You guys as well. And you can turn around and question. Um, I'm assuming they both fell in the range of salary for what the outgoing or what we had budgeted for. I mean, those are questions that I would have asked before. Yeah, that's a good point. Because a lot of those questions come up during the debriefing after the committee knows what the salary range is. And I'm assuming it was in the range of what we have budgeted for those positions. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if off the top of my head, um, considering their experience, um, I would say that it would fall into the, the range. I think Lori does a, you know, kind of middle of the road budget with a family plan um, for insurance. So it would make sense for these two folks that it would fall under that. Yep. Okay. Any other questions or discussion on the two hires? If none, um, Nicole, you had made a motion to approve the two new hires. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 No one's opposed. Um, 5.2, approve capital transfer from general fund. Um, I have very um, mixed thoughts about this. Um, So I've been told that we actually have to transfer the capital funds, which I'm not quite sure if we have to do something, why it just doesn't automatically. Right. I just and why don't we wrap my head around that something that right. we have to do but can't just get done. So um, I, I never sign, saw a final dollar <clears throat> figure on what exactly we're transferring for the general fund. Which leaves me a little leery to transfer something that um, mm -hmm. we don't know what dollar amount we're transferring. Right. I don't know either. I mean, I can assume that it's what's um, the, the projected ending balance in. Yeah. The general fund, but we haven't continued closing out our year through the end of June, so I don't know exactly what. That the other boards didn't pick a dollar figure. They just said, you know, whatever just the leave, balance. you know, whatever two percent of the budget is, that stays, and everything else goes over. Okay. Um, I mean, you have a ballpark idea of what it is, you know, but you, you know, when the books close, just leave two percent and move everything else over. And my understanding is we're moving that over so that what was left over from this year that we didn't spend gets put in a safe net account to be expended for Borough Land mm -hmm. only. And that's why it's going into the capital fund because the Act 46 law does allow us whatever current money we have in our capital fund stays within your building and doesn't go into the big pool of the everybody. Okay. Um, and my understanding is the 2%, and maybe you can clarify this, Dave, is left there to cover unexpected expenditures 
Yeah, and, and bills that haven't haven't come in yet, yet, which are actually clear, like a lot of them yeah. are delayed and not cleared probably until probably I would say mid to late July even. Yeah. Because some of the bills like that will end on June thirtieth, she might not get a statement until like July tenth. Right. right. And that check will run won't go out. But it's still in this fiscal year that the work occurred. So, mm -hmm. um, would somebody like to make a motion for that? Motion. Uh, I motion to approve the capital transfer from the general fund for the amount of. I would just do we say an amount? Well, we don't have the amount. So, so maybe a percentage. Or should we do a percentage? Anything over the two percent. Dave, do you know how it was? Well, it's like I'm, I'm pulling up the minutes from the other Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm Someone moved to approve the transfer of funds in excess of 2% of the June 30th, 2019 total to the capital fund from the fund balance. I was second to that. Character. So that's our motion, Tiffany. Did yes. you get it? Okay. Exactly. Because <laughs> I was like going to calculate 2%. I can. Which, uh, which board was that? That was East Montpelier. East Montpelier. Okay. I'll just go in there and take their what they said. That's <laughs> our motion. <laughs> okay. Thank you. That was from which meeting? It must um, have been there. The 17th? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. 5.3. Mm. Um, approve resolution for transfer of property. Um, if somebody wants to make the motion, then we can start discussion. I approve the resolution. You make a motion. motion. I have a motion to approve the resolution for transfer of property. So on page 18, um, so with three of us on this board, uh, I'm not willing to sign this resolution for the transfer of property. Um, I think. As a whole district board, we need to figure out like what's happening with the property, and nobody really knows at this point. There's been statements made by Judge Mallow. There's been statements made by multiple people on the new board. Um, several of the other school boards did not sign this resolution oh, on June 17th, so no, we're not. I don't, I, don't I don't think any of them. Did, no. So um, we're not the only ones in this situation to not sign it. Um, I'm open to discussing it in your input. Um, I'm not sure at some point if we might have to warn another meeting as our district board to revisit this. So um, if there's definitely discussion about it in your thoughts, I'd love to hear them. I just, I'm not at a point where I'm ready to transfer the property over without really knowing <clears throat> how the Supreme Court um, is going to roll and what's going to happen with the other pieces that are still kind of hanging out there. I agree. Julia, yeah, that's fair. Okay. So we still have to take a vote. So um, a nay vote would be for no. <laughs> So, if you're in favor to approve the resolution for transfer of property, please say aye. Opposed, please say nay. 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 Motion did not pass. Um, board orders. I 
I knew that document. I didn't sign that because I don't um, need it explained. Um, that one I got, but the other one. So, right there. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, that's the resolution. You did sign it or you didn't? We did. We did because I was talking about Okay. I'd like to not read back. Good enough. Um, I'm just going to pull that page out and that would be great, right? Because then it cannot get misconstrued with anything. Please. Um, I didn't for a process piece, one. this piece of paper is to give a blanket authorization to sign all payroll checks. Um, through the summer months when we wouldn't meet, but there shouldn't be anything that we actually need to have them sign. I'm okay with signing this document. I just, I'm a little leery about the process because it was not on our agenda. Right. It wasn't at all. But yeah, I do I believe it was on some of the other board agendas to approve it. And on our WC, UUSD board meeting that we were at last time when we had this, it was the document was there for us to sign and it was on our agenda to take a vote on. Hmm. See it on these but... Can I say it again for a second? Mm -hmm. There was a sentence on there that convinced me I was going to sign it. checks and balances that would <clears throat> completely cover that. I, I'm fine with yeah. signing it. And if you are not, Nicole, that's totally fine. I'm not sure that they will have anything. Um, and this is for the next like from August on? I mean. Well, no, this would literally. So this specific one is just for the Berlin School District, which as of June 30th, will no longer okay. Okay. exist. That's fine. So it's pretty much just to basically close out the rest of this year if they need to sign checks because we won't meet in July okay. regardless. Okay. So mm -hmm. I'm okay with signing that one. And that's pretty generic of what we've always had in the past. But um, if it's not on our agenda, does... Well, they just said it was not on Eastmont Players. I mean, no, no. they... Uh, it seems like it came up that night, though. Did it come up at the SU level? Yeah, it did. Yeah, maybe it that did. was the only time that it did come up. We had the discussion at the SU level, and basically they said all local boards have to approve it. Time. So I'm going to put this one in here, Aaron. I am going to follow up with Krista just to make sure that it's okay to sign this without it being on our agenda. And if it needed to be on our agenda, then we might have to reconvene by phone to actually approve it for that piece. Okay. Um, board orders. It's really hard to run a meeting. Again, board orders used to come out prior to our meetings. They would get scanned in and sent to us, so we had a chance to look them over because it's really hard to kind of run the meeting. Right, yeah. Do the town and meeting and then come back listening. and do this. Yes. Well, I'm, okay. Especially with only three of us being here because I like to look through them before I sign them. So I'm just going to take a minute to look through them. Unless anybody has anything that stuck out to them. <coughs> Some of these seem quite old. What do we give to Turtle Island? If it's probably a preschool that chose not to come here, but we still have to pay for, right. mm -hmm. what is it, Act right. yeah. 40, yeah. Act one, it's not, six, whatever six. it is. Yeah. They can choose for their own three and four year old preschool. They don't have to come here, but we mm -hmm. still have to pay a portion of their mm -hmm. program. I think up to 10 hours a week. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's just a big chunk of change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it could also be a triple E thing too. So the, yeah. either one we okay. legal or not. Yeah. motion to approve the board orders in the amount of $38,074.19. Any discussion? If none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? We've already gone over um, board communication. Unless anybody would like to revisit that one again. <laughs> I will make a motion to adjourn at 7.15. By consensus? By consensus. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>